Good morning, everybody. Can you just stretch your hand and pray for me that uh, this important topic about storms in life will strengthen us and overcome whatever storm that may have come in our life now or in the future. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are always with us in bed in good times. And you will always assure of your peace and protection and security wherever you are with the righteous. Father, I just commit you, uh, our preaching, our, my preaching today, anoint your servant and anoint the hearer that you'll be able to understand such a great power that even the storm of nature submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We also pray that even our own problem, big or small, will also be resolved in your own hand, I pray. Thank you, Father God. Always we pray and give thanks in Jesus' name. We say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. So, trusting in God's power and presence are very important topic, yeah? So, I, want, I thank God that I'm here standing again. Uh, i just been to Kapit, uh, Sarawak, yeah? Uh, last week, preaching in uh, Kapit, Sarawak, yeah? uh, fly to Cebu, and now drive to Kapit for about two hours. No need to use the long boat anymore, yeah? So go to Sarawak, there are a lot of uh, exotic food there waiting for you. Hallelujah. Okay, the theme for today is trusting in God's power and presence. Learning from what we have just heard in the reading, yeah? And the purpose is to bring peace to our tr troubled hearts, whatever the nature of the trouble or the, you know, um, we, we are facing in our daily life. And why is this message so important? Because it touches every one of us. And there are a lot of things as life is full of unexpected challenges in a few, in many, many ways. Even as Jesus Christ is about to come, the Bible has already specifically said in Matthew 24 and many of other verses that as, you know, the rapture is about to come, we are not uh, uh, living all the time with the air condition and singing lullaby or whatever, but uh, hard times are coming. So be prepared. Amen, amen. Uh, you can see that uh, people, many prophets, I hear in the YouTube that this uh, war between Israel and Hamas and Hezbollah will never stop. It will go on until maybe the battle of Armageddon. And don't think that Sabah is so far away. We are part of the uh, equation. I mean, uh, we are, I believe that we are on the Israelite side because salvation comes from, uh, from uh, the Jews. So uh, we continue to pray and, you know, pray that uh, we are able to withstand whatever comes our way during this uh, difficult time. And um, when I was uh, uh, suffering from COVID, uh, one of the things that the Lord uh, specifically uh, impressed upon me is that there's going to be a time of famine, you know. <coughs> no food. Imagine there will be no rice from Thailand, from Burma, from Vietnam, from China, or from Taiwan, from other parts, or even from Semenanjung. Uh, no rice coming here. In our rice supply is, is only about 20%. A lot of the rice are imported. So we, we may have to eat like the Japanese timer, tapioca lah. Yeah, plant a lot of tapioca rice. <laughs> Hallelujah. These storms can make us feel vulnerable, helpless, weak, fearful in failing in our walk with God. We, we, cannot, we cannot follow God anymore. We are just so downhearted or a lot of fear and hindrance. But uh, the story of Jesus coming to storm in Mark chapter 4, verse 35, uh, in 41 just now, reassures us that God is not distant. He is not indifferent to our, our plight. In the Malay word, uh, Tuhan itu sangat peduli. Yeah? He, he cares, He knows that we are His flock. And Jesus' physical presence with the disciple, even as He was sleeping, symbolizes God's unwavering, unwavering support with us. In well, uh, presence, He's always with us. And even calmness in the middle of storm. Jesus was so calm in the, 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 while the disciple were already panicking. Yeah? How come, how come the Lord is sleeping? And we are, we are about to sink. You remember when Peter was uh, uh, seeing Jesus um, walking? 
and he tried to walk on the uh, on the sea, on the on the on the water. As long as he looked to Jesus, huh, he was not sinking. But when he saw the wave, the problem, oh Lord, 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 I'm sinking. <laughs> and Jesus said, "Come, you know." Rich in the, he, he stretched his hand and saved Peter from sinking. There is one Korean in Galilee. Huh? I think one Korean. Huh? Uh, during the boat travel uh, from one end to the other. He jumped from the boat and tried to walk like Jesus. I think he was drowned. No? Jangan main mind. If the Lord is not with you and with us, we shall surely be, be drowned. You know? So, even when Jesus was arrested, charged in beaten up, uh, even during his crucifixion, he was so calm. Like a lamb to the slaughter. House. He knew, he knows that uh, uh, that is his destiny. Of course, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was praying to God intensely, sweating with blood, submitting himself to the Father. What is to come? That is torture, death on the cross at Calvary. So, when we know that a storm is coming. Go to our knees and pray. Amen, amen. Pray. If possible, wall in advance if we know that it is coming. In the, he, Jesus' ability to bring peace and calm to the storm emphasizes his power to bring peace to our troubled hearts, troubled family, troubled state, troubled country, even troubled world. And um, I think uh, it is quite clear that without Jesus, this war between the Israelites and the Hamas will never stop. All the earth, the people on that, that, that are 8 billion souls need Jesus. Then there will be calm, there will be peace, there will be uh, no war. But of course, uh, war has to happen because it's been prophesied. The enemy want to have a last try to bring as many people as possible to, to, to hell. And that is why even at, at, up to this date, the world population of 8 billion, it is only uh, reaching uh, about 3.5, nearly about 4 billion souls. Still more than half are still lost souls. So you and I um, have the, you know, have the, we should have the commitment uh, to be at least winning a few souls, uh, a few souls for Jesus, uh, to, you know, um, to heaven. So God's presence will bring peace, even law in order. Like Uganda, you know, after the dictatorial of uh, Idi Amin in uh, Mr. Uh, Milton Obuti, where there was civil war, churches were burnt down, AIDS were 50% of the population of Uganda at one time. But peace, law, and order prevails after Pastor Dio and his team fasted for 120 days for the healing of Uganda. Wow. And Uganda was healed. And they have a revival of nine months, uh, I don't know how to preach for nine months. Uh. And uh, after uh, Pastor Dio uh, pastored 120 days, uh, uh, the interpreter need to stand five feet in beyond, uh, close to five, uh, five feet, because he was so hot like a, like a burning coal, you know. But of course, uh, repentance is always needed for healing and deliverance. Like in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, that if my people shall humble themselves and pray and seek uh, my face, and turn away from their wicked ways. I will hear their prayer. I will uh, forgive their sins and heal Malaysia, heal our family, heal uh, the, the, the country, or heal each one of us according to our need. So the storm of life, point number one, the storm of life, point number one, yeah? In verse 35 to 37. Jesus and his disciples are crossing the Sea of Galilee after a day of teaching. So it's normal after you accomplish something, you may fly or you may go by boat, yeah, or you move by car. So Jesus suggests that they go to the other side of the sea, of the other the lake, leaving the crowd behind. Uh, we have already been ministered with the word of God. As they sail, you know, as we can see from the word of God, strong wind, fierce storm arises, causing the waves to crash over the boat, threatening to break it up. And this happens despite the presence of Jesus in the boat. So even though we are already Christian, don't think that uh, everything is uh, like uh, Alice in the Wonderland. Uh, 
everything is fine. No, the more you uh, come closer to Jesus, the more we submit ourselves to God, the more we want to serve God, more storms are coming. That's why one preacher was saying that uh, as we grow up in walk with Jesus much, much closer, suddenly there will be a lot of Pharisees to point finger. Wow, this is, this is not, uh, this is not ngram, whatever, you know. This is illustrate that just as disciples fear and doubt in the middle of a storm, we believers also face storm in, in our own lives. And even though we know that God is with us, we are still fearful at times. We are still in doubt. Oh, is God uh, with me? Uh? Especially when you uh, go up uh, and uh, uh, follow an aeroplane long distance or short distance, you will always think, uh, is Jesus in his aeroplane? Uh? Yeah. <laughs> it's natural. But this, and despite the presence of the Lord, even in our own life, even in our family or business in ministry, still there will be storms of life. To test our faith, resilience and endurance. The Israelite, if they just go across uh, from, from Egypt to the land of Canaan, it's a two-week journey, two weeks journey. But the Lord wants to see their hearts. So the pushing, pushing, uh, like this, uh, in took 40 years. Uh, the first generation was swallowed up by the soil. Only the second generation survived, except for Joshua and Caleb and a few others. Most of the rest, including Moses, couldn't make it to the, uh, to the uh, uh, you know, a promised land. With following Jesus, we can and do encounter sudden and severe difficulties. For example, personal loss, whatever loss property or life, health crisis that is between life and death, financial trouble. In other words, there will be a spiritual attack, emotional turmoil, breakup of relationship due to betrayal in marriage, court committing crimes, or even being corrupt or legal suit or whatever, or critical disease or sickness. I have this uh, one person I prayed in KK just three, four days ago. His name is, uh, please pray for him, uh, Brian Lim. Uh, he has uh, cancer. The father also died cancer. The mother, I said, oh, he stayed in a, a big house uh, with one ama, quite rich, but uh, this poor uh, uh, unmarried guy uh, suffering from cancer. And the doctor told him two days ago, uh, I cannot cure you. What I do with this uh, chemo is just delay your death. Wow, when he was told, he was so sad. He couldn't sleep, he couldn't eat. What am I going to do? Uh, Reverend Augustine, he called me. I said, the doctor is not God. Look to Jesus. What is impossible with man is not impossible with God. I give you a lot of verses. And then he called me. He watched up me. Oh, I think the Lord. I met an angel today. <laughs> we need to encourage one another. Amen. Like one of my family, many years, about 20 years ago, five times struck, older than me, a lady. So come to the hospital, the doctor examining him. Okay, he will only live for seven days. Bring her back to your kampong to Lopit. Or else, let her die here and bring, bring back the corpse after one week. I said to the daughter, don't bring back. But the husband said, oh, we better bring her back. I said, no, no, no. Uh, my, this is my cousin. Let her stay in the hospital. And I said to the young daughter, pray day and night and I will visit you every day. And we pray, 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 pray. And she was healed after two, three months in the hospital. He, and he is still living. She is still living today for another 20 years, still alive in the Tamo, in the, in the Sunday market. Each time she will see me, oh, oh uh, I'm, still, I'm still alive, Augustine. I think God, thank you for your prayer. You, you know, something like that. But the doctor said only one week. Her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't trust everything what the doctor said. Another one. He, she, she, the doctor said that just about a few months ago, you will only live nine months because your cancer is tahap ampat, already stage four. And we prayed for this lady. She came out of the wheelchair uh, to answer my sister. And she, uh, she, 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 she already lived more than nine months. She gave a testimony in the church that uh, God heals her supernaturally. Not Augustine Zang. Amen, amen. Give glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. Job. What shall we do when we face trouble or storm? Job 22 verse 21. Job chapter 22 verse 21. It's not here but in your Bible. 
Submit to God and you will, never, and you will have peace. Then things will go well with you. I see, I take it from NLT Bible, I think. Submit to God. Submit your problem to Him and you, help, you will have peace. Whether it is money or health, whatever, then things will go well with you. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about anything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Verse 7 in Philippians chapter 4. Then you will have experienced God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guide your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Wow. So we need peace. We need peace. So we must remain strong in our faith and trust in God's power to help us. He is our helper in times of need. If we read in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, we must be strong in the Lord in His mighty power. There is one more lady uh, I prayed about. Uh, that was uh, last Monday. Monday. This last Monday. Uh, her name is uh, KK. Uh, Chiu Siolang. Uh, she's a uh, Isaibe. And she has a, pro a kidney problem. And thyroid are getting bigger. And she doesn't want to go to the hospital. Takut ito. Ito uh, um, cleansing. Uh, what do you call it? Dialysis. They are takut. I said, sister, why are you takut? But I pray for you. In pray, pray, pray. Bring her to confession, repent in the house. Then the, then the face will brighten up, you know. Uh, the healing, we leave it to God. Important thing is, we pray. Amen, amen. We pray. The Bible says that sign in wonders, say, follow those who believe. That even as we lay in upon the sick, he or she shall recover. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. We need to read the word of God. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and pray always. Part of our protection in power. Number two, trusting in God's power. Point number two, verse 13, 39. Jesus demonstrated his divine power by coming the storm with a command, quiet or silence, be still. The disciple, gripped by fear, witnessed his authority over the nature, highlighting their need to trust in Jesus. The disciples were experienced fishermen, you know, and yet they are terrified. Highlighting the severity or the seriousness of the, you know, the storm, the greatness of the storm. So what about life? There will be big, there will be small uh, storm in our life. But in contrast, Jesus was asleep, indicating his peace, no fear, but confident of his authority over nature. That the storm of nature will not endanger him and his disciple. Although the disciple shouting, uh, as if scolding Jesus, why are you asleep, Lord? We are going to die. We are sinking. <laughs> this story teaches, teaches that even in the middle of, uh, I admit, life fiercest storm, God's power and presence will always be there to give us and to bring us peace. There's one lady in America during a bad storm in a flooding. She was stripped down uh, in a car in a, on a lamppost. Uh, she was stuck like this, uh, and uh, the wave were uh, pushing. And she remember one, uh, rem remember one psalm. She recited psalm something like, "The Lord is my protector. The Lord is my helper in times of need." She recited that as she was. Uh, the car is really like this, uh, and the, uh, the wave kept on coming, with coming. But the moment she recited that verse, the uh, flood subsided, and she was able to walk out uh, safe. You know, so very important to memorize certain words of God, you know, um, uh, to, to, to be used when uh, there is a storm. Uh, there was one time I was flying to KK for a meeting. I think it must be a standing committee meeting. When we arrived at the airport, Sandakan, it was lightning, storm, heavy rain, strong wind. So Bishop Chinfa and I were arriving at the airport. Oh, Augustine, it must be a very bumpy and, uh, uh, you know, uh, flight today that we are encountering. So I just keep quiet. I go and check in. I come out and I rebuke the wind. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the strong wind. I command the wind to stop the strong wind, the lightning, the thunder in Jesus' name. And as we were going in, uh, when we fly, it was very smooth. Uh, no more thunder. Why? In the name of Jesus, you have power and authority. Amen, amen. Give glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. One time I was hunting. There were six elephants in front of me. But I know that we have power over even elephant. Amen, amen. I said, in the name of Jesus, elephant, ciao. <laughs> Go out. 
in the elephant we know, you know, six of them. But the, the male one uh, looked to me like this, uh, half an hour eye to eye, uh, wanted to attack me, tapi tak jadi. Because the spirit in you, in me, in First John chapter 4, verse 4, is far mighty and stronger than he that is in the world. Amen? <clears throat> Trusting in God's power and sovereignty, knowing that he is with us in every trial, is an assurance of our peace and security. Let this uh, assurance strengthen our faith in encouraging you and me to rely on him in his mighty power at all times, in all circumstances. Let us read Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Isaiah 41, verse 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my right ears, right hand. Wow, Isaiah 41, verse 10, yeah? This verse reassures us that our God is constantly present to strengthen us, to protect us, support us, and save us, and encourage us, and give us confidence that we are at all times secure and eliminate whatever fear. For God did not give us the spirit of fear, the Bible says, but of power, of bonus, love, and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. So when you start fearing, quote this verse. <coughs> When I have a, some kind of fear, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, God did not give me the spirit of fear, but power, bonus, love, you know, sound mind, not gila gila, yeah? In Psalm 37, verse 39, the Lord rescued the godly. The Lord rescues the godly. He is their fortress in times of trouble. Wow! Psalm 37, 39. In Daniel 6, 6 chapter 27, Daniel 6, chapter 27, he rescues and saved his people. He performs miracles, signs, and wonders in heaven and on earth. What else we need from our God? He's always there. So this lady wanted to surrender. I said, would like to commit suicide when I prayed. She said, why you do that? You are his IB. His IB should be a, um, a, 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 a strong prayer warrior. Oh, you know, Reverend, I speak in tongue. I said, use your tongue. <laughs> Why you keep quiet? Use the tongue to fight against the enemy. Amen, amen. Finally, trusting in God's presence. Mark chapter 40, verse 41. In Mark chapter 40, chapter 4, verse 40, 41, Jesus rebuked the disciples for their lack of faith. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Well, Jesus was there. They have been with Jesus for three years plus. They have seen how Jesus um, uh, walk on the to, uh, walk on on on, on, uh, on the Galilee. How he feed the five thousand uh, Lazarus uh, six, four days in the grave and still come out alive. You know, but when the storm come, they were all afraid. You know, this is like the importance of trusting God at all time and remembering that God is always with us. God say, "I will never forsake you. I'm always with you." So, if the doubt arises, rebuke that doubt. Rebuke that unbelief. And say, I believe in Jesus, my Savior, my Lord. There is a recent flight from uh, England to Singapore. And it uh, encounters a severe storm. Wow. And that Christian lady tied up the belt. Huh? But the race uh, fly up. Uh, <laughs> in, in the toilet, uh, <laughs> I think injured. <laughs> because the player... <laughs> Nearly, near, nearly Burma, near Burma. And I think it went down so far down. But the pilot was quite amazing. Can drive the uh, plane to, to Bangkok and, you know, get another plane. Um, during a storm, storm time, uh, I, I pray in the aeroplane. I normally say, quiet. I command the thick cloud pathways for this aeroplane in the name of Jesus. Because the uh, announcement... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, to your turbulence, please return to your seat and surpass in your seat belt. You must pray. Before I turn the aeroplane, I lay hand upon the aeroplane. I said, Lord, I pray that the co-pilot co -pilot, or the crew, the passengers are safe. And all the components of the aeroplane are in airworthy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Pray. So if there is a turbulence, don't fear. We need faith to defeat so many uncircumcised Goliath in our life. You remember Goliath was attacking the Israelite even with one step uh, the Israelite will go stand like this and even fall to the ground in fear. But David said, I come to challenge you and fight with you 
in the name of my God. So God was with uh, David in defeated Goliath. You know? So there will be a lot of Goliath. There will be a lot of mountains of difficulties in our life. But remember, uh, the, the word of God in Psalm chapter 145, verse 18, uh, that says, Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In Psalm 145, verse 18 says, The Lord is close to, the, to all who call on Him. Yes, to all who call on, his, on, on Him in truth. The Lord is close to all who call on Him. Yes, to all who call on Him, on him in truth. So, uh, the Lord is always close with you and me. Acts chapter 1, verse 21. But everyone who calls on the name of Jesus, the name of the Lord, will be saved, shall be saved. Even in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, it says the same thing. Call upon the Lord Jesus. Like this uh, young girl alighting from uh, a long train, uh, to light, and uh, her house is quite a distance. And uh, as she came down from the train in America, big and crap her, this little lady, uh, you know, and, uh, she couldn't move anything because the big man uh, was so big. But she's, Jesus! In the man ran away, uh, jato, bangkit, you know, and uh, ran again. Later on, they come to know, uh, I think uh, she must be nearby, you know, uh, that uh, when she was uh, um, uh, holding that lady, a big uh, 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 malaikat uh, uh, with a sword uh, was chasing after him, you know. And he released the girl and he ran away. So when we call upon the name of Jesus, the angels with his sword will come to our rescue. Amen, amen. The same with the pastor. Like uh, you have to walk from town to St. Michael. Uh, and there's the pastor walking on foot. Five orang jahat uh, were uh, trying to block him. And he has no other way to go up. And nearer he said, Jesus! And these five people uh, ran out uh, Jato, lari lagi. In a few days later, he came to the uh, priest's house. Uh, Reverend, can we learn from you? What, what sort of uh, uh, witchcraft you used against us? Because we were chased by a very big uh, uh, you know, sword-wielding white cloth. Uh, that's why we ran for our life. Can you teach us, uh, share with us your secret? <laughs> and the priest said, I have no secret. It was the Lord who protected me. <laughs> Five people, you know, tried to, you know, a bully or harm the priest, but uh, because of Jesus, he was saved. Amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So this story of, uh, story of Jesus' miracle in the storm teaches us that the, it is important to tr trust God's power in that he's always present even in times of trouble. Even in, but even, uh, even when we are in fear, in, in uncertainty, always trust the Lord. Few times when my account is so low, I have one friend. He's a St. Michaelian, you know. I don't know whether you know him. Uh, he's, he's an architect. I don't mind to tell you. His name is Arnold Kwan. Arnold, I think Arnold Kwan is like Arnold. Ar Arnold, he's an architect. He was a, 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 a kind of a spiritual son of Reverend Kutok. So he's now a successful, uh, uh, apa ito? Um, ito, uh, design, design ito building. Architect, architect. He said a few months ago, I really ran out of money. I cry out to the Lord, um, like prostrating on the floor. He has run out of money. And cry out to the Lord, Philippians 4.19. God will supply you need. Amen. And suddenly, said in a few days, I received 300,000. Oh, client paid. They have a bill. Uh, and I got money. He said, wow, he was. Uh, so God answered prayer. Amen, amen. So do not fear. God even supplies our need. Remember, Remember, uh, the Lord is spirit. Wherever the Lord is, there's freedom. There's deliverance. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. So when we need the Lord, just say, Lord, you are here. When, when the Lord is around you in me, there's healing and deliverance. The enemy cannot stand in the brightness of God in uh, the Holy Spirit. You know, God's omnipresent. Our God is our omnipresent. He can be anywhere. He's an almighty God. He's all-knowing God. So we surrender everything to him without hesitation, without doubt. In the Bible, there are more than 500 promises, you know. So all these promises are yes, yeah, yes and amen, you know. When God promised, he, he will make sure that it is fulfilled. For God cannot lie. 
So trusting in God's power and presence transforms our perspective, or uh, removing our fear. It shifts our focus from the magnitude of the storm to the greatness of our God and for His glory. It allows us to rest in, in the assurance that He's always with you in me, guiding us in, uh, in working with us uh, in all things that will work well for us. You know, remember in, in uh, Mark chapter uh, 16, verse 20. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. The Bible says, I will cooperate in work with you in conform my word with signs and wonders. So when you go in ministry, meditate, Mark chapter 16, verse 20. God is always with us to confirm his word with signs and wonders. Amen. Trust in Jesus like the disciple who are called to trust him during even life storm. Always believe. Always believe. He will care. He will protect at all times. Yeah. Day or night, you know. Peace in, abyss, uh, in the midst of chaos. The story encourages us to find peace in Jesus, knowing that he's, a, he's sovereign. He's, he's in over all circumstances. He's, he, he's everywhere. He's above everything, you know. In faith in action, use your faith to pray, rebuke, you know, in uh, pray in warfare. We need warfare at all times. So in conclusion, Jesus rebuked the disciple for their lack of faith, emphasizing that uh, it is important to always trust God in that He's always a presence wherever we are. So let us recognize that God is near in bring peace, even in the middle of our life's a storm, trusting His assurance that uh, His salvation in His country, His love, His protection, He is always with us. In the Bible say, He will open the way out for us to escape whatever problem we are facing. He will open the door for us. And we, I encourage each one of us to deepen our faith uh, and rely on God's presence in every storm and memorize the word of God so that we have power, we have a bullet to, to release during times of, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 storm. God is to always uh, strength, giving the strength by His Spirit and by our prayer, by His, by His word, you know, meditate. And you can even sing in the middle of uh, something, sing. Uh, this is my, I don't, my wife is not here. When we have a uh, pantun, pantun, uh, I go and take bath, I sing, you know. I sing away from the, nah, 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 and I have peace. Uh, and of course I pray. But my wife uh, still papaya, yeah. <laughs> because they are lambat pray. Ba. Always pray. Always, uh, we immediately pray. Amen, amen. Then let uh, things uh, go. You remember Jesus said, then wait until the sun go down and you forgive everybody. Before the sun goes down, Forgive and pray and bless. Amen, amen. He will deliver us from every storm of life in the name of Jesus. So trust God. He's not only our savior. He's our protector. He's our helper. He will rescue us. He will give us peace when we cry out to him. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you. We may have storm in the past or even in the future, or even now. For those who have a little or big storm, I am praying, we pray, that Lord, you deliver. You be with that person. To assure him that you never forsake him. You love him. You protect him, oh God. Those who are sick, Lord, you heal them. Those who are with financial problem, Lord, you supply their need. Those who have a relationship problem, Lord, we pray for reconciliation, healing of relationship. Those with personal health, you are our supernatural doctor who heals, who cares, who delivers, who saves. Thank you, Father, for your word. Let this word sing into our heart and continue to trust God at all times. That you are always with us. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. Hallelujah. Give glory to God. Thank you. Thank you.